Hello, welcome to ClickShare.com. Today I'll cover two important aspects in ClickView scripting. The first topic would be on code reusability and the second topic would be on script debugging. So let's get started with code reusability. There are two ways to reuse the existing code. First approach would be by using the include variable in ClickView. I've already created a video post on how to use include variable. However, just to give you a brief idea on what include variable does. Include variable allows you to call the script, which is saved outside your ClickView document. So it can be a text file or a QVS file. I will not deep dive about include variable for now. So let's look at the second approach for code reusability and which is by using the subroutines. So you can write your script between sub name and end sub. You can also pass parameters while calling a subroutine. You can have multiple click view statements, I mean click view scripting statements between sub and the end sub. Once we have created the subroutine, then we can use the call statement to execute the subroutine. Script execution in ClickView starts from top to bottom and left to right. Same principle applies when you're using multiple tabs. A hidden script will be executed before the normal script at each reload. And the hidden script is always shown on the left hand side of all the other tabs. It remains there until you close the document. And hidden script is always shown on the left hand side of all other tabs. And please note, if the hidden script is used in the document, you can't use binary load. Also, if a hidden script contains a section access, such section will not be permitted in the normal script. So let's quickly look at a demo on how to use subroutines and also the and also how to set up the hidden script. So let me quickly jump to ClickView document. So I have a ClickView document here and let me open the script editor. So I have a simple old ADB connection and I'm connecting to SQL Server and I have three tabs here. So I'll first show you how to use the subroutines. So I have a simple subroutine here and I'm starting with sub and my sub name and I'm not passing any parameters. So it's a straightforward subroutine and I'm just using a simple click view low scripting statement and I'm using the uh, load script and I'm calling it from select statement from SQL. I'm just calling some table names from sys objects where type equals to you, that is the user tables. And I'm closing it by end sub. So this is a straightforward subroutine. And you can write any number of statement between the sub and the end sub. And the execution of this sub will only happen when I'm calling it. So I'll show you the next tab. So here I'm using the call statement and calling it by the sub name, which is load table names, which is same name as this name. And I'm using the call statement to execute my subroutine. So it's pretty straightforward. You can write many statements within uh, subroutines and you can call them whenever you want. So you can make your click view script more modular and you can call them later. That's how I work when I'm working on complex scripts. So let me quickly reload this document and let's look at some results. So I have a field name called table names and it shows all the table names in that particular database. So that's good. So let's go back and now let's look at how to set up the hidden script. Let's say I wanted to use my subroutine as my hidden script. So click on file, click on create hidden script and I'll give a password. And now I can place, if you see this tab is on the extreme left hand side. So now I can place this bit of code. I can cut this and paste it here and save it. Click on OK and reload the document again. So it works. Now let's close and reopen this particular document. 
let me go back to script editor now you don't see the subroutine content you see the call statement because it is not within the hidden script however you don't see the actual subroutine because that's within the hidden script and you won't see that until you type in the password so i can call or i can look at the hidden script by clicking on edit hidden script and it will prompt for the password so i'll give the password and immediately it shows up my actual subroutine so this is very useful technique to store your script within the click view document however compared to include variable which stores the scripts outside the click view document so this can be useful if you wanted to store the script within the document okay now let's look at the script debugging bit and let's understand more about script debugging i'll minimize this or i'll open the powerpoint we'll go to the next slide okay this is a screenshot of the debugging window i'll talk more about it before that i wanted to mention few important points for your understanding so running the script in the debugger mode can make it a lot easier to isolate the scripting errors. So it's easy to identify any scripting issues or any bugs within the script. And the debugger makes it possible to monitor every script statement and examine the variable values while the script is executed. The progress of the script execution is displayed by a yellow marker. We can insert the breakpoint by clicking on the row numbers, we can also see the red circle. So this is the yellow marker, which I'm talking about. So that shows the script execution progress. And then this is the red marker. I've highlighted it. And this red marker is actually the breakpoint. So you can set up breakpoints. And these are the row numbers. It shows one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. The statement being executed is displayed in the middle window. So this is the middle window. So this shows the active statement which is getting executed. Finally, the right hand bottom displays all the variables. So this window displays all the variables within your click view document. And the active variable is shown in red color. So I'll show you a demo on how to debug as well. And on the left hand side, you will see the status codes and script errors. So if you have any errors, you will see it on the left hand side. So these error messages are same as your reload status message so let's jump to click view document and let's look at a demo on how to debug your click view script so i have my click view document press ctrl e and first i'll remove the hidden script because if you're trying to debug the hidden script you will not see the execution so i would rather place the script within my normal tab and come back and paste it here and save it so let's debug this particular subroutine so let's click on debug button so we have a window here and this is my current statement and now if i wanted to place a breakpoint all i need to do is just click beside the row number so i have a breakpoint here and here and if you wanted to remove it click on the red button again or you can click on the clear button, which clears all the breakpoints. I'll also talk about these buttons on the left hand side. The run button is a normal script execution button. The script will progress until the breakpoint is encountered. In the animate button, this button runs the above code, but it will have a short pause for each statement. This way it is possible to monitor the script execution. So you can see a small pause between each statement so it's easy to see what's happening within the script and i generally use the step button which is like step stepping into one statement at a time so this is very useful so if i press the step button it will go to the next line and if i press the step button again it will go to the next line so this is what it does so if you see the yellow marker it's coming down to fourth line and now it's fifth line there we go and before I generally go ahead and do the debugging, I always limit my load to only 10 rows or 50 rows. Because if you have a massive document with more than a million records, 
your debugging process will become very, very slow. And if you have any errors, your document will crash and you have to reload it again. So to avoid that inconvenience, it's always useful to load or if it's always used to, useful to set up your uh, limited load to 10 rows or like 50 rows, depending upon what you wanted to see. And uh, there's also a help button. So you can get more information about debugging by clicking on the help button. I'll not go into that window now. And end here. So you can use the end here so that your script execution stops at the current line. So it considers the previous statements and it only loads the data or the variables till the point in time when you stop the end here button. And even you can use the end here button if you already identified the problem. So this button closes the debugger but keeps the data loaded so far. So it's very useful. And the cancel button aborts the script execution and it discards all the data so you will not have any data if you use the debugger cancel button and finally the close button if you click on the close button it will close the script debugger tab so let's quickly run into the script click on step step so if you see the active variable in red color and it shows that this variable is active step again and this window shows my active statement execution Step again. This shows the status codes. Like I said, it shows that it, it, it requested for an OLEDB connection to connect to SQL Server. And the connection is successful, so it shows the status message connected. Now we are executing the subload table name. So if I click on step again, so if you see, this will not be executed until you use the call statement. So it's jumping from sub to end sub. And now we're calling the load tables subroutine. And click on step again. Now you see that it's going with into the subroutine and it's trying to execute the statements within that subroutine. So again, we see the status message saying 26 lines fetched which is successful and click on insert so this is done click on close okay so now we can see the data so it's very useful technique and i personally prefer to debug my scripts and to identify the problems not just with click view debugging is an important aspect in any programming language i hope this was helpful thank you for watching have a good day